Okay, so today we are going to study gender and um, how it is um, related to the language, gender and age uh, related to language. So the first question is that do uh, women and men speak differently or how do you get to know the difference when a child is speaking or when um, a female is speaking or when a male is speaking? So we know about... Um, even if we're not looking at someone, we know that, you know, what could be the age of the person while uh, the person is speaking. Regardless of the um, voices, there are other factors which are involved in um, identifying that the who who is the person. So, um, uh, other than just the features of um, uh, the voice. For instance, uh, when in when someone is speaking in Urdu, so obviously the person would be using um, uh, if if the person is female, so the person would be using um, ki for themselves or majarahi thi, right? Rather than saying majarahatha. So if someone is using uh, all these words which are related to their which are related to their own own gender, so the way they uh, use language there are certain features which are uh, which are the part of um, either males uh, communication or language or either a uh, females communication or language but uh, in order to go into detail of that the first and uh, the foremost important thing is to know the difference between the two terms that is uh, sex and gender what is the difference uh, between these two terms when it comes uh, to sociolinguistics. Uh, sex is the term that uh, refers to the, biolo the, bio uh, the biological characters. So for example, in um, if for example, in, in when we talk about uh, in bio or medical sciences, we actually refer to as uh, the differences are referred to as, uh, you know, um, uh, sex-based differences however gender is uh, more uh, uh, is, is more like talking about uh, socio-cultural behavior including speech which uh, which is the characteristics which are associated with the socio-cultural uh, behavior so the, uh, the proper term for that is gender uh, when when we talk about gender so here we are going to uh, throughout this chapter we are going to uh, refer to uh, it as gender differences because they're, they're, these are the differences related to uh, language, which is the part of sociocultural behavior. Gender exclusive speech differences, highly structured communities. Now there are communities, um, I will not go into detail of this uh, example, but there are communities where people not only speak um, different languages, uh, but uh, like these uh, certain words which are used for um, males and females, as I've already given you the example of jarahiti uh, uh, or jarahatha. But they also have different languages for males and females. And that is, they completely use different speech features, different linguistic features for male and different linguistic features for female. So if you look at this example that in Montana, right, there are pronunciation differences uh, both for male and female. So if a woman say something um, for the bread, for bread, the woman is using this word. However, men are using this word for the uh, for uh, for bread. So even even the words that they use for simple things in their community, even the words that a male uses for the same thing is um, uh, is is different compared to the uh, women uh, using you know different words for different uh, things in the in the uh, in 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 their community. So uh, through this, we can say that. Um, language is uh, is used differently in some communities that even they have differentiated um, the language of uh, 
uh, women and men completely. Okay. And <clears throat> if a person is uh, using a wrong form of their uh, gender, the older communities and even everyone around them would consider them as bisexual. So this is this is a, you know a kind of example that the choice of language that you use just the way for example if someone is using majarahi um, thi for if a male is using majarahi thi so obviously we consider it we we consider um, that maybe the person does not know the language this is the first uh, uh, thing in our mind and um, if not that then if they know the language and they're using we consider them as bisexuals as well so in um, there's another example that in uh, bengali a language of uh, india the women use an initial um, i uh, sound where um, the men use initial n sound right so n sound so uh, even in um, uh, bengali like there are differences the way men and women uh, speak. So if, if the way you speak would um, make the difference, how you are accepted in a society. So if uh, these are the things that we learn uh, with the passage of time in a, in a society. So uh, for instance, we may learn the language, uh, let's suppose we are learning Bengali, but we may not be able to learn these differences based on women and men's um, differences and then people and when we use those language uh, in in uh, in that place people would laugh at us because we are uh, not using it in a proper way um word shapes in other languages contrast between um, men uh, women and uh, men use different affixes so uh, you know, affixes that is um, uh, uh, using, uh, you know, certain, uh, these are like morphemes that you add to the word. So, uh, for instance, uh, in, in certain, in certain uh, um, languages, in certain communities, men and women uh, use different affixes for um, and depend uh, for for anything depending on uh, on on their gender that is if a male is speaking so they would use different affixes and if a female is uh, speaking so they uh, she she uh, would use different affixes you can see the example over here that this is the men uh, this is the women's form ba and this is the men's form so though they use it for all these words that is for deer, for person, for grizzly bear. But the way women are saying it is completely different from the way men are saying it. So even they differentiate um, men's and women's speech uh, through this way as well. Okay. Um, you may also see this in modern Japanese, that is, uh, these distinctions are more a matter of degree of formality and politeness than gender. However, sometimes it happens that um, it is more about formality rather than, uh, you know, differences based on gender. So men's form are largely restricted to casual contexts and are considered rather uh, vulgar, while the women's forms are used by everyone in public context. So um, it's like in Japanese, women are not allowed to be informal. So um, women, uh, women's form, uh, form is used um, in almost every, every context, every public context where informal language is required. And women are also using it um, in the uh, informal context as well, because women are not considered to be informal in their uh, culture. However, men, uh, it's it's okay with them to be informal. So um, that's why they uh, men use these forms uh, in uh, some some contexts, but are not. Um, but I'm not considered to use it in the you know in 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 all the contexts. It's not allowed. So if they are sitting with their friends, 
they can use this men's form. But if they are sitting with their family, they are going to use this women's form, which is more, um, you know, for everyone. Okay, so uh, gender preferential speech uh, features, uh, which is related to the social dialect research. If you look at this example four, you'll see that um, there's a girl who is seven year old, that is Kate, is seven year old of um, Canadian from Vancouver, whose parents were working for six months in the city of Leeds um, in Yorkshire, England. He had been enrolled, okay, it's, it's uh, Kate is he. He had been enrolled in the local, at the local uh, school and his um, first day, Keith came home very confused. What's your teacher's name? Uh, asked his father. She says she's Mrs. Hall, so, um, but when the boys call her Mizelle, she still answers them. And the girls sometimes call her Mrs. Hall and sometimes Miss Al. It sounds very funny. So here, Keith is actually um, confused. Confused because uh, this is now ha not how it, uh, he has anticipated it. So you know that in formal context, uh, she is calling, the teacher is calling that calling herself as Mrs. Hall, that I'm Mrs. Hall, whereas students know that her name is Mazelle. So students are using um, Mazelle uh, for her. Um, there are differences of how, uh, you know, women and men use uh, different languages in any social dialect. So we can see the dif this difference in uh, it's very common in in um, uh, in the Western urban uh, communities, and th even the differences of uh, the way they use their language. So it, there there was a study, and in the study they found that the frequencies um, of the uh, of the way they speak uh, this ing form. As you all know that when we are pronouncing ing uh, as a native speaker, not as a non-native speakers, as an as a native speakers. Uh, the study found that women use more ing uh, pronunciation um, as uh, which is fewer in uh, the men uh, for example they be pronouncing it as uh, swimming rather than uh, pronouncing it as swimming so the last g sound is not there when uh, men are pronouncing it. However, when females are pronouncing it, they pronounce it properly. So this is something which is common and it was found in the study that, you know, females are, women uh, would pronounce it in a different way as compared to men. So if you don't, uh, if you don't know from the voice uh, whether this person is a female or a male and they are speaking and if they are using this Ing, you can guess by um, this pronunciation that it's a male or it's a female who, who's, uh, who's uh, you know, uh, speaking. Both in um, social and the linguistic pattern, uh, patterns in the communities are gender preferentials. That is, um, uh, that is, though both women and men use particular forms, one gender shows a greater preference for them uh, than the other. So um, uh, if, you, if, we, if we look at the whole community, there would be, there would be some uh, males producing um, the sound of ing as well. However, majority of the males would not pronounce it in that way. So it's like, um, it's like they are more focused on the informal uh, pronunciation as compared to the formal pronunciation of the 
uh, word. So men usually go for the informal pronunciation as compared to women. Okay, gender and social class. So we can see as by the this title, we can see that, uh, you know, gender, um, the, based on gender, the use of language, it may uh, also link with the social class as well. So uh, the linguistic features which differ in the speech of uh, women and men in Western communities, as we have already studied the example of uh, ing, the pronunciation of, for example, speaking or swimming, um, the uh, in the Western communities are usually features which also distinguish the speech of uh, people from different social classes. So the way uh, people pronounce some uh, certain language uh, or certain words, it may also classify them under certain uh, groups as well, uh, under certain, certain social classes as well. So for instance, if, um, if we are, uh, uh, if, if, if someone is communicating and um, even if you look at the language in our society, in uh, the ones who speak Pashto, the way we speak Pashto is very different from um, the way, uh, you know, lower class uh, speaks Pashto. You, the choice of words that they have is very different from the way, you know, we uh, choose the language. So it's it's not just, um, you know, the, the difference of the gender, but it's also, it's, it also refers to the uh, differences of the social class. So the way certain language is used, it's linked with the social class. However, females are more, um, females of a society are more um, uh, uh, targeting uh, social uh, uh, language of the upper class in their um, circle. So uh, women mostly use uh, formal uh, or language of uh, higher classes in their communication. So in um, so in this example of ing as you can see it here okay so if you can see here that in um this was a study conducted and in this study um it was uh, like men use more vernacular forms than uh, uh, women, that is informal forms than, uh, than women, that uh, this figure shows, for instance, that in uh, social dialect interviews in Norwich, it was study conducted in Norwich, uh, that men use more of the vernacular ing form at the end of the word, like speaking and walking than women. And this pattern was quite consistent across five distant, uh, distinct social groups. That is uh, from a lower to the higher or from the higher to the lower. So it was varying in all the groups, right? If you see this, um, this um, a figure, you'll see that uh, this, 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 this um, bar shows the way men uh, use the language and this gray color uh, bar shows the the way uh, women use the language or the ing form and if you see this it it was hundred uh, percent in uh, it was percentages so it was hundred percent that a men used um, ing form whereas it is less in the females as compared to males in the same uh, group class that is if we are talking about the higher group class or if we're talking about the um, uh, if you see C group one represents the highest social group so group one represents the highest social group whereas uh, um, uh, going towards the group uh, social group of uh, five which is the lowest so if you see it's like less than uh, uh, men and then if you see this, then ing form of uh, is, is less than as compared to how men use it in this social class. Then looking at this social class, um, uh, 68 and uh, 81. So if you look at this social class, there, there we see that, uh, you know, 
men use it 81 percent uh, whereas females are using it 68 percent from the same social group class um, which uh, is not um, uh, it's the middle class right and then you see over here so we see that only three percent of the women are using um, uh, in the 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 ing form and uh, only 20 and and 27 percent of the males are using ing form and if you look at this uh, into the highest social class ing form is used by men only and females never use this um, in form um, in the pronunciation not the form not the word they use the word but uh, the way they pronounce it that varies so in the higher class in the highest class only men uh, four percent of the men pronounce in that is speak in or walk in and whereas females pronounce it as you know walking or speaking means they pronounce it properly and there's not even a single female not even one percent of the females are pronouncing it as um in in so this shows that uh the use of language even varies uh, from uh, social class to different social classes as well and within one social class even the use of um, the language of men and women varies um, men and women vary okay and if you look at one more factor in uh, in this um, figure that is that uh, if you look at different social classes and look at only the females differences so you'll find that in every social class, the differences is comparatively more even between the females. So here we don't have any female who is using uh, the ink form. Here we have 3% of the female. In this social class, we have 68% of the females. In this social class, we have 81% percentage of the females. And in, in this, 97% uh, of the females are uh, using this. So even with it, even uh, from one another in different social classes the use varies okay the table that we discussed was uh, the figure that we discussed was the study uh, which was done by Trudgill and um, then uh, if we look at there's this one another factor that is not only that uh, that females are more uh, using the standard form as compared to male they also uh, use uh, women generally use more standard grammatical forms as well uh, than uh, men as compared to men and men use more vernacular forms than women a study shows that in um, detroit in, for instance multiple negation is used by uh, men more as compared to the um, women so men use will usually use multiple negation that is i don't know nothing about it rather than saying i don't know anything about it so they use double negation or if rather than saying i know nothing about it they say i don't know nothing about it so men use um, in their speech use more a vernacular form as compared to uh, uh, females as compared to women and um uh, this pattern is typical for many grammatical features. It's not just this uh, multiple negation, but in in majority of the uh, things they use, uh, men uh, use more vernacular forms as compared to uh, females. And uh, the reason behind that is um, that men consider themselves as more um, uh, as more dominant in the society, and that is why they think that you know they have the right 
to use informal language or the vernacular form and you know, no one is going to raise question on them however uh, female on the other hand uh, use standard form and uh, standard uh, features of the language and the reason is that uh, you know they try to be perfect that is why they use uh, this uh, this um, standard form of the uh, standard form of the language uh, same um, like almost all the linguistic features that is uh, women use more uh, of a linguistic uh, form and then men in different speech communities and it is generally the standard form so if um, uh, if females are using as as uh, if females are using any language, so uh, or if they are saying anything, they would try to prefer uh, they would prefer standard form of the language, which is more prestigious form of the language, as compared to the more uh, vernacular form, which is the choice uh, of men in our society, uh, no, in in uh, in in different speech communities. Um, and a study shows that it is uh, it is not that men when they grow up they show this uh, this feature, but it is very common in right from the very young age. And uh, it it was identified over uh, identified over thirty years uh, ago in a study of American children's uh, speech in a semi rural New uh, England village, where it was found that the boys used more in than the than the girls. Uh, more ing forms so it's not just um, that you know when they grow up they have these differences you will find these differences right from uh, the very young age so um, the, uh, young boys and young girls they also have these these uh, differences of uh, uh, speech patterns which is uh, common across uh, boys and common across girls uh, depending on uh, the way they use the language. Um, same is the later studies in Boston and Detroit uh, identify the same patterns. That is, uh, boys use more vernacular forms such as uh, consonant clusters simplification. Uh, that is a rather um, uh, like they actually don't say the last words. Uh, that is, they won't pronounce it as la as last or told, but they'll pronounce it as last and told. So, uh, rather than pronouncing the last uh, uh, cluster consonant cluster, they eat out that consonant cluster. If if there is in between any word, so they would um, uh, if these two words are coming together, then then they'll eat it out. That is why it's called a cluster. So they eat they not eat it out, but they won't pronounce the word um, the way uh, it has to be pronounced. So these are the differences which are there in um, in boys and girls, uh, the way they pronounce the language. Okay. Um, now, what are the explanations of women's linguistic behavior? That is, why do they use uh, such a language? Why can't a woman uh, of be more like a man? It's um, true that it is not possible, even if in even in in the way they use language. So, as I've already uh, told you, the reason that why females use uh, uh, this language is uh, because of the appeal to the social class and um, its religious state, uh, its related status for an explanation. That is the first uh, reason. The second refers to women's role in society. That is, uh, what is the women's role in the society? And we are going to discuss all these points in details. And the third is uh, to women's status as a subordinate group as compared to men. And the fourth. Uh, to the function of speech in expressing gender identity and special, especially uh, masculinity. Now we are going to discuss all these points. Okay, the first point is the social status explanation. That is, uh, why female use, uh, why females use 
uh, this uh, standard form of the language or why do they prefer women use more standard speech forms as a way of claiming such status that is they use this language of a standard uh, they use standard form or they use prestigious form in order to show their prestige or in order to show that they belong to a higher uh, class or, or to the higher social class um okay there is another um okay there is another reason uh, for uh, this as well it related to the social status explanation that is that women because women lack um, status in the society therefore um, studies suggest that women try to use this um, standard form of the language or prestigious form of the language in order to gain that uh, status in order to gain that status indirectly that is uh, if they are using a standard form of the language so uh, people won't consider her uh, and give her more uh, you know um, uh, uh, more status in the society or they show that they belong to a higher class uh, this uh, they, they, there is this one thing as well that the studies show that um, uh, that women who are working in um, in, uh, in, in, in 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 some places they they use fewer standard forms than women working in the home so it's like if a female is working at the home they use um standard form of the language whereas uh, females who are working in the you know in, who are working outside the home or go, who go outside or working females and then they use uh, less uh, standard forms compared to the females who are working at home however uh, com compared to men, the working females also use a standard form. Compared to men, they use standard forms. But compared to the women who are at home, they are using less um, or fewer standard forms. So this is, uh, if through this, it, it is evident that, um, you know, females try to, uh, females who are at home, they try to, you know, um, take uh, this uh, this uh, as an advantage of uh, gaining um, acceptability in the society or or, or um, you know that to show that they belong to uh, uh, to a social group which is um, which is standard and the same was found in the um, Irish working class community as well that the uh, younger women were, uh, you know, um, you, they used higher uh, percentages of the linguistic um, features associated with the high status group than the older women uh, were, who were working at home. So it's like you cannot uh, say that because they already said that but the, the little evidence that we have in fact suggests that uh, suggest that just the opposite may be true as well. That is, sometimes it happens that as this study, study suggests that it may be the other way around. So it depends on different communities. So in certain communities, there is this, that the women are using uh, more standard forms um, in the the women who are, who are um, at home. Are using standard forms uh, however it may happen the other way around as well that is um, women um, use who are working actually who are the working women uh, may also use uh, standard forms so here the example shows that the uh, women who found work outside their community and were using um, higher percentages of linguistic forms associated with a higher status group of the uh, older women who were working at home. So mm, when once they found um, their jobs outside their community, they started using uh, higher uh, percentages of the, uh, you know, standard form of the language. And um, as compared to the women who were working at home, so this is something which is completely opposite to what it is said over um, the previous example. And uh, 
therefore it, this pattern is not consistent so we can say that uh, in certain communities it may happen the one it, it may happen in the one way or in certain communities it may happen uh, the other way and it's not a definite thing um, uh, where um, women have few other sources of uh, prestige language may become specially significant as a social resource uh, for constructing a professional identity but if you work in a soap factory or a shoe factory or on a building side, the forms that you, your companions value are more likely to be vernacular forms. So your linguistic capital will take a different form. Um, so the conclusion is that um, though women try to use prestigious form, try to use standard forms, but if there are working women, then in a society, in in a society where females are working with um, with males, and the kind of the environment that they are working in. So, for instance, if they are working in a soap factory, if they are working in educational setup, it may it would it would affect the way they use the language. So, if um, if we compare or if we conduct a study where different uh, we study different women working in different working places with different men, it would vary. Um, uh, and the results would vary depending on the way they use the standard forms. They would always uh, prefer the forms which are considered valuable or accepted in their own working place. So for instance, if someone is working in a, a brick factory Obviously, the kind of the language or uh, the Pashto that he, they are using would be vernacular form, not the standard form. But if if a female is working in an educational setup, even if um, if that female is not educated, but she's working in an educational setup, the kind of the language that she's going to use is going to be the standard uh, form of the language. You may take the example of um, uh, the maids that you have at your home. So if a maid is working in... Um, in in a place where you know if people are not educated then um the kind of the language vernacular form is the the form that they are using would obviously be a vernacular form and if uh, they are working in a place where they are um the, there's a high society and they uh, they're educated people so obviously she would use a standard form of the language the way it is required Okay, the second point uh, is that women's role as a guardian of so society's value. That is, uh, why female use standard form? Because f uh, men look up to the females uh, because they feel that they are the ones who are going to make a society who's going to teach their children. So that is why every man um, expects that uh, every man expects that a woman is going to speak that a woman is going to speak a standard form of the language so this is one of the reasons that um, a woman more use a standard form of the language misbehavior from boys is tolerated whereas girls are more um, quickly corrected if you see in our society as well so anywhere if you go um, if a boy is misbehaving then it's fine uh, but if a female is misbehaving then if a girl is misbehaving so instantly you know you, you're telling her that girls do not say stuff like that or it is bad you're a girl you shouldn't say that however with boys people start laughing when they are using bad language but when it comes to females, they are corrected right from the beginning because that's how we train them, because that's how we um, we make them grow up. Because uh, females are expected to be polite. Females are expected to use standard form of the language. Females are uh, expected to be, um, you know, um, uh, to, to teach others. That is why we use standard form of the, uh, standard form of the language. One, uh, one way in one way you can say that um, if you're talking to your mother it has to be more polite and more informal so when a mother's interaction so uh, when a, a woman is using uh, the standard form 
it, it they are using it for uh, you know in not completely in the home environment all the time because if you see that a mother has to use some informal uh, informal and relaxed language as well that is it's she it's not that she's all the time using um, formal language it is a relaxed informal context then uh, the vernacular form occurs most often in everyone's in most often in so um, so standard forms are typically associated with more formal and less personal interactions and um, it seems odd to explain women's greater use of uh, more standard uh, speech forms when it comes to you know home uh, environment because when they are talking to their kids they are using informal uh, uh, informal language as well or uh, vernacular uh, language as well but uh, as we know that women are using standard form of the language and when uh, they are recorded for these um, uh, studies so we see that they try to change their communication they try to you know move towards the standard form and it's very common that you know, when there is a guest at your home your mother is using a very formal language as compared to your father so um, you know women are more towards the standard standard forms and uh, men use more um, informal or vernacular forms Uh, another reason is uh, subordinate, uh, subordinate groups must be polite, and you know that females are considered to be uh, subordinate in the in in our society. Uh, men are more dominant in our society, and that is why they uh, they use more standard form of the language. So, women are. Um, considered to raise kids and that is why they use more polite uh, more uh, standard form of the language standard form of the language is um, you know it is equals to the polite speech so we know that if you are using standard form of the language if you are using the language up or in urdu right up rather than tum or tu it is more polite speech as compared to the um informal language so um that is one of the reasons that uh, female use um this language as females are uh, you know it's a subordinate group and uh, we consider that females uh, must not offend any men that is why they try to use standard form in order to be more polite when they are expressing something so um uh it's it's like um, it's not necessary that uh, you know you can also uh, be angry uh, you can be polite at the same time you can be angry and express your um, anger in um, for instance if you if you look at this uh, example 7 you'd see that in a very standard form um, of the language uh, and in very standard accent uh, the person is uh, expressing anger or insulting uh, someone uh, read this example you are an intolerable bore uh, mr brown why don't you simply shut up and let someone speak who has more interesting ideas to contribute now this is something which is said and it is you know said in a standard uh, speech but at the same time it is uh, it's standard but at the same time it is kind of you know um giving uh, like actually insulting the person the other person uh one more reason is that by using standard form of a women uh, for forms uh, by women they are actually protecting uh, their face value so um a face value is when you are trying to um when when you are trying to be acceptable accepted by the society so um that is why you try to uh, you know um uh, they try to females try to use uh, this um, 
a standard form of the language. A technical uh, term, which is uh, faces technical term used by uh, sociolinguistics with approximately the same meaning as in the phrase to lose face. And so um, that is um, being accepted by the society is actually um, uh, can, or being being accepted by the society or, or considered um, positive in a society. Um, that is why female use use um, these these standard forms. Um, there is this one saying that um, women are actually claiming their status by using the standard form. They are not entitled to have this standard, but they claim that status through using um, this standard form. So it's, it's like, um, it's like uh, if a female is using a standard form, they are trying to portray to the world that, you know, they are, um, they have this right to be accepted by the society and they have this right to be standard uh, in, a, in a society. Compared to that, um, men uh, use more informal or, you know, you can say the one which is not the standard forms of the language. And it is strange that we are explaining that females are using, uh, why females are using standard forms rather than explaining why men are not using the standard forms. So it's very strange that even over here, we are studying like why females are using the standard form. Why not men are using the standard form? Because using standard form is normal. It's norm. It's normal to use standard form and it's okay to use standard form. However, we should study why men are not using the standard forms. Uh, we should study why why um, men are using the informal uh, forms and not the standard forms. So, like, uh, even in this stance, we look at that how, you know, um, females are subordinate in a group and, um, you know, and men are considered as the dominant group. Now, coming towards this... Uh, uh, answer to why men are using um, not the standard form is um, because vernacular forms express machismo. Or well, that is being manly. That is um, something which is accepted in a society. Or if you read this example, you'll know. So, um, after reading the above example, you'll know that, you know, the way the men communicate with one another, even within, like, if two men are communicated with, one, if two men are communicating with one another, then among, uh, between them, if one is using more vernacular form or more informal form, that man is considered more tough, more masculine, or, um, you know, the one who is dominant uh, in, in the males, even. So, we see that vernacular forms, um, these forms carry uh, macho connotations. That is um, something which is mis which is related with masculinity or toughness. So, when uh, we we see that when we look at even movies and uh, different movies, we see that how men are um, who the one who is going to win the fight is using very uh, slang language and is using very informal or vernacular form. And he's the one who's the, you know, who's um, fighting with the people and he's going to win. And we see that a man who's very masculine and he's not scared of anything in movies, that man is, that character is using more informal language. And if you compare it with, even with the females in that, um, in that movie, you'll see that if a female is using more informal language, she's considered as a bad female in the, uh, in you know, in the movie. She, she's swearing again and again in the movie. So we, we see that it's a negative character. 
so this is how the difference is when it comes to males using uh, vernacular forms and you know when females are using vernacular forms okay so um in men usually um use standard uh, use use a vernacular form not standard uh, form of the language and um a, a, they you know men apparently uh, want to sound less standard than they actually are so even if they know the standard forms they'll still try and prefer to use um, the non standard form of the language and uh, they regard it more positive and they regard more the vernacular form as compared to like for them uh, vernacular forms are more positive than uh, compared to the um compared to the standard forms and these forms um uh, have covert by contrast with the overt prestige of the standard forms which are uh, you know uh, cited as models of correctness so uh, we have two forms of prestige that is covert and overt overt prestige is related to the standard and formal language uh, language and covert is related to related more to vernacular forms of the language so um these forms have covert because covert is related with the uh, with the with the vernacular form of the language so um uh, like they more uh, give uh, value to the uh prestige to the vernacular form as compared to the overt which is uh, related to the standard form of the language so for female it's overt for male it's covert prestige and um which we are going to discuss in uh, further chapters in you know detail the um and and that is why they uh, use you know the in order to show that you know they have this authority and they are tough they are masculine they have this authority that they can use um uh, any form of the language and it would not affect their uh, if it would not affect their acceptability in the society no matter whatever they are doing these are the things which are uh, making them choose um, uh, non standard form of the language as compared to or prefer non standard or vernacular form of the language as compared to the formal ones and um, if females are using it so they are considered as you know Uh, with the loose morals and uh, if they are using this language or they are considered you know um uh, bad women that is why they they avoid using standard uh, using non standard form of the language however it is completely opposite to um, men where it is considered as the sign of masculinity and where it's considered as a sign of strength that they are using the um you know less uh, standard form of the language so far these are the reasons however uh, we can say that because women more women are more conscious i've already discussed this point that women women are more conscious of the standard so when it comes to and male are more mostly you know they want that um, we don't care so when an interviewer is interviewing um, a person for uh, for the study they mostly uh use more standard form like they change their standard forms and uh, so women when they are when women are interviewed uh they shift more dramatically um than men and and they use standard form of the language however males uh um they use informal form of the language you, you know they try to be more informal in with the interviewer and females try to be more formal with the interviewers and it's obvious that the communication that they are having would have all these features of formal and informal language which is uh, respectively used by the uh, females and males so this is one of the factors uh, that like that could be the reason that they are uh, using this uh, these uh, languages uh, and these studies showed 
all these results because uh, they change their language when they are talking to uh, to interviewers. However, we cannot deny the importance of uh, no matter if it is interview based or anything, we cannot deny the importance of uh, males and uh, males and females. So if you look at this study, you you'll see that uh, the boys uh, who used more vernacular forms had the highest score on the scale based on the toughness that is ability to fight and steal. Uh, so, you know, language has to do with the uh, with your personality as well and with you know being male and with being female so l your language is is, is um, representative of who you are and that we can see very clearly over here in this example that um, you know uh, peer group status and ambition uh, to do a tough job uh, such as even slaughter uh, someone or to kill someone or to steal or to fight all the boys who were um, who were capable of doing this all ha were using more vernacular forms and um, uh, but interestingly the speech of tough girls those capable of swearing stealing or setting fire to the adventure um, uh, play group was quite distinguishable from that of the boys on a number of grammatical features. So uh, toughness was here, not the distinguishing factor, but you know, gender identity is something which has effect over the uh, use of uh, your uh, language. So even if the girls who were you know very very much swearing or were able to steal or were able to do adventure kind of thing like setting fire, so. All these uh, were all these girls were tough, but when those features of the language were compared with the boys who could steal or fight or kill, they both were different the way they were using language. So no matter what happens, males or uh, boys or girls would always have this difference in using um, this um, use, the way they use language, uh, the choice of the language standard and non-standard form of the language or the vernacular form of the language.